here five minutes before you and figured that in this gigantic electronic store there had to be at least one working camera. This job is eating me alive. I can't breathe anymore. Since we find out he's actually giving this speech inside the store, what does this cut to him walking outside about? It's a dramatic cop show introduction fake out, which anybody above two years old would understand. Except you. Doing the best speech from Donnie Brasco. Or actually, ten of me are doing the best speech from Donnie Brasco. Math must not be Peralta's strong suit, because there are clearly more than ten monitors showing his face. It's called an estimation, Jeremy. Got lucky. No, I got here five minutes before you and figured that in this gigantic electronic store there had to be at least one working camera. And Jake is just bringing this up now, with the thieves still out there? Horrible unprofessionalism aside, the owner of the store is there with them and is witnessing all of this incompetence. First of all, you act like since the thieves are still out there, they need to hurry to catch them, which is not true. The robbery took place a while ago, meaning the thieves aren't near them anymore and they actually need to take their time to find out where they are. Second, are you implying that the store owner should realistically be reporting police incompetence? Because if so, I have one phrase for you. This is f***ing Brooklyn. You know what this title card could do for us? Tell us the day of the week. I'm over here thinking it's 8.31 on the same morning that Santiago and Peralta investigated a robbery. You know, from 30 seconds ago. But it's not that day. It's a new day. And we only know this to be true because everyone is wearing new clothing. I'm happy to do f***ing detective work to keep the days straight. We're not even two minutes in. If you can't keep the days straight in the show, you really are an idiot. I hate this. Oh, yeah. Okay. I hate this. Then you're just gonna wanna add one. I'm winning. I'm not saying that cops don't have these kinds of case-solving competitions, no matter how unprofessional and frankly gross that might be, but it's no less a sit. It's a joke, Jeremy. Deal with it. Tell us about the new captain. Captain Holt will be here soon. He'll want to introduce himself. Since we learned that Terry knows Captain Holt, why in the f wouldn't he give his team at least some info so they can make a good impression? It's as if Terry is a fan of sitcom hijinks and wants to make sure they occur. Probably just because he knew that the squad's unprofessionalism was way too out of control to be helped by a mere warning. I just wish Captain McGinley never left. He was the best. I know it's the pilot and hasn't found its form at this point, but given all the whooshy flashbacks, this episode is really scrubsy, isn't it? Like, don't you get the sense these two characters could easily be played by Zach Braff and Sarah Chalk? Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the episode cliche. If you look closely enough at Captain Holt's uniform, you can see a black WTC commendation on his badge. This is a nice touch from the casting department because it's a bar awarded to any responders on September 11, 2001. However, it's also supposed to be worn at the highest level in the badge area, with the exception of the American flag. So it should be up one more spot. Okay, you know what? I'm removing a sin for this incredible attention to detail. Jeremy is 100% correct with this sin. Nice job. You can laugh at this physical comedy bit involving a baked good. I'm over here looking at this horrifying Tetris-esque crime against paperwork. Maybe these are useless documents about plumbing repair on the third floor from 1978, but goddamn, someone scoop these files out of this locker and stick them in one of the hundreds of boxes this precinct has all over the place. First of all, this baked good joke is classic, and there's no reason for you to be looking at anything else in this scene. Second of all, this is fucking Brooklyn. Are you expecting the police department to be 100% organized? Where do we start? We start with him. F me, man. I know this pilot needs to get to the point. But the only reason Holt is focusing on Peralta is that he was making an innocuous joke about the incoming captain. Literally for the exact reason you just said. He made a joke about Captain Holt. Having said that, how in the ever-loving did Holt know that Hot Rod wasn't wearing a tie since he just walked up behind him? Sure, he could have been intuited, but that would place him in the Batman pantheon of detectives, and I'm not sure we're there yet. Wow, you really are dumb. Are you trying to say that a genius detective like Holt wouldn't be able to insinuate that Peralta, a total clown, wasn't wearing a tie? Citizen Kane is terrible. Pick a good movie. Man, Rosa, have a little better movie taste. Even CinemaSins wouldn't sin Citizen Kane. This entire sin is in the service of a terrible meta joke. What do Santiago and Peralta have riding on this bed of theirs? I will tell you on six conditions. God, can you imagine having six things in your mind immediately ready to demand at the drop of a hat? I'm gonna try this. <clears throat> We're just gonna skip this joke because it's ridiculously unfunny and very cringy. If he gets more rest, she has to go on a date with him. He guarantees it will end in sex. 2013 office bets that could and should get you fired in 2020. It's a joke, Jeremy. This show is a comedy. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Milipnos. Show or a movie with an SNL cast member has other SNL cast members make cameos cliche. This cameo was really funny, so I don't know why you're complaining right now. 
Wall Street Journal on the doormat. Top floor apartment. 20 bucks says this guy's like a hot eligible bachelor. I'm guessing it's more likely he's a time traveler because New York World is a newspaper that has been defunct since 1931. Fine, I'll take off another sin. Jeremy did some research for this video, I guess. And while you're out, you can buy yourself a tie. Oh, actually, sir, I'm wearing a tie right now. Check it out. Why is Captain Holt not immediately firing Peralta? Holt isn't firing Peralta because he's the best damn detective in the precinct. Holt might be super professional and uptight, but he's not stupid. I'm questioning the validity of these flavor labels. I demand to see the manager and taste test to be sure that they are what they say they are. This stupid joke isn't funny or a real sin. Also, for someone who prizes food enough to mother kill a dude for a gourmet ham, this asshole is being extremely careless with his product. How dumb are you? He's a murderer who's trying to get away from the cops. Ruining his food isn't exactly at the top of his priorities list. Also, no one in this f***ing deli is getting involved. Are they all in on the ham heist with Ratko? Again, this is f***ing Brooklyn. Most of these people probably hate the cops, and the rest are too scared to get involved. Lucky man, I wish I could get a sign here full time. Keep playing hand puppets at your desk via webcam on a secured police network, and you will. It's a joke, Jeremy. Okay, you know what? I'm making this a cliche. Ready? Jeremy doesn't understand comedy cliche. 1981, he caught the disco strangler. And at 1608, we're seeing our fifth flashback. And honestly, I'm too exhausted by character whiplash to be impressed with the capture of a disco yo-yo killer. I mean, if that's the sort of thing I'm supposed to be impressed with. Jeremy doesn't understand comedy cliche. Santiago, boy, Diaz, get in here. Bring everyone and a camera. That's not necessary. That's not Why wouldn't he just sit back down? Because he obviously knew that Holt would have been able to get him back up and it would have been pointless. Another flashback! And yes, I already sinned having too many of them, but this one is a flashback to things that happened in this episode only 14 minutes ago. Don't treat me like I'm an idiot, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I don't know what thinking happens and stuff. Yeah. First, this flashback helps get the point across that Peralta missed the obvious. It's not out of place like you think. Second, you're acting like you're smart in this sin, which is clearly not true. Why don't you just go to the movies with nope. me? Why is the entire staff of detectives, including the goddamn commanding captain, out on this stakeout? Sure, it's a big case, but the f kind of organization doesn't leave at least one asshole behind. They work at a precinct, Jeremy. This is only one of the squads. There are still a bunch of other squads at the precinct. Humility over. I'm amazing! But uh, you're not very good at dressing yourself. That's an armhole in the vest that you're putting your head through. Jeremy doesn't understand comedy cliche. So if you take a look to your left, you'll see Detectives Boyle and Diaz. Right there is Detective Santiago. And behind you is Captain Holt. Fun, cool, right. But how does he know where any of his team would be in the storage maze? There's so little communication amongst them about planning, and there's been no sign of those techie inner ear communicators. Okay, Jake could see Holt behind the guy and could clearly see shadows on the walls, meaning he knew there were two people on the left and only Boyle and Diaz were paired together. By process of elimination, he knew where everybody was.